Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And, and tonight, once again, we have Pastor Anthony uh, from Daily Excellence on with the broadcast here. And Daniel, uh, I mean, Anthony, gosh, I got too many names in my mind. Tonight. I've never been called Daniel before. Hey, but that's not a bad name, right? It's not a bad name, no. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right, Brother Anthony, listen, I got a question for you. Um uh, before we even get going deep into this, uh, we got a lot we're going to be covering tonight in a short period of time here, kind of kind of go over things pretty quick there. Um, but uh, uh, can you share with us how things have been going as far as with the uploads that you do on uh, uh, Mike from around the world, his broadcast, uh, COT, uh, did that ever get worked out for you? Yeah, it, uh, we finally got it. Uh, for those who may not know, we got we got shut down for about two weeks. Uh, actually, we we were given the boot. We took a uh, daily excellence down a hundred percent. And basically, to make a long story short, what it was is we got three strikes um, back to back. One, two, three. Uh, uh, I think it was like. 3.45 a.m., 3.46, and then 3.50. They were all issued bogus, uh, complete bogus um, uh, copyright infringements of COTs, uh, files that we post on YouTube. Uh, it was complete bogus charges uh, or strikes, whatever. Uh, and so we contacted COT just to let them know what happened. Uh, Mike actually stopped in the midst of production uh, to help us out. He... Uh, and we're very grateful for them over at COT doing that. He sent me the paperwork I needed, um, and then we forwarded it over to YouTube. It took nine appeals uh, total uh, to get that taken care of, but uh, it did. Ten days later, you know, we had to wait for the other side to rebuttal. Um, you know, then they had to prove, you know, through courts and lawyers that they had proof, which they didn't because they don't. Uh, and so finally, ten days later, uh, after the initial strikes. Uh, we were back up and going, and uh, they removed everything and reinstated us and all that stuff. So uh, we're back at it and going again. And, uh, of course, with full 100% endorsement of Council of Time, and now i got paperwork to prove it. So <laughs> That is incredible. I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to get back up and running once again. I, I remember you telling me when this all happened, and and uh, and and it is majorly rare that YouTube ever reverses uh, their opinion once they've taken someone down. So that is really, uh, that was super kind of Mike uh, to step up to the plate to help to defend you yeah. on that. And uh, we're glad that you're back up and running as well. well uh, Brother Anthony, there's a lot happening in the world. And uh, one thing I'd like to uh, quickly address, you'd mentioned to me the other day about uh, because of a company that you work for, and we won't name this company, uh, but the you guys were running into uh, issues of shipping to China. Can you can you share a little bit of that with us? Yeah, uh, you know we 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 ship a lot of uh, different auto parts and things like that uh, around the globe and things. Uh, and I had asked the question because I was wondering why. Uh, it seemed like we had to kind of go around and, and the shipping, you know, to ship from one country to get to China. And so I had asked the question, I was like, why is it we don't ship anything to China? Uh, and the answer that I was told was, is because we're not, we're told through U.S. Customs uh, not to ship directly to China due to, um, you know, war times, pretty much, due to, to Basically, it's what it was because of war times. Uh, and so uh, I did a little bit of research and digging on that. I didn't find too much um, on the company side of it. Um, but from what I was able to research online, uh, this has been kind of going on for a while. I know the U.S. The, the US Postal Service on International Shipping uh, doesn't, doesn't uh, do anything over there either. Uh, but their reasoning from what I found was due to uh, COVID-19 um, that they haven't resumed shipping over there. Uh, around the time that this news came out last week, too, we also saw uh, that uh, the United States gave uh, a aid package over $300 million or billion dollars to Japan to defend itself 
against uh, China. Uh, we've seen war games taking place over there. So, um, you know, corporations tend to have uh, certain intel before the general public does uh, on things like this. And so I just found it kind of interesting. So that's when I had messaged you and was like, hey, man, did you know that we can't do this because we're supposedly, uh, and that's the answer I was given, uh, was supposed to because we're at wartime with China. So I thought it was kind of interesting, to say the least. It, it definitely is. In fact, I'd reached out to uh, a friend of mine who is in the marketing industry uh, and, and and deals with Wall Street, et cetera, things like that. And uh, I was trying to get his take because I figured if anybody might know when it comes to being able to ship goods and services overseas and whether or not we're under wartime or not, uh, he might he might actually know. And uh, he was seeing some things that were going on uh, in relation to that. He said here to me, he said it's limited to the North American business or whole of their international businesses. Uh, was he actually asked that question because he says because its entire its entire company then Honda and Toyota are likely dealing with the same thing approximately twenty percent of the global market shares across the automaker industry, which would be fairly significant to put it lightly. Uh, but he did go on to say that he couldn't come across anything that was relating that would confirm a hundred percent as of yet. But the markets are pricing and something important uh, uh, in, in inst institutional capital. He said, may already be aware of it, which may mean they're de-risking in short term until the info gets disseminated more broadly. So mm -hmm. there was to some degree, they're seeing those things in the market kind of creep in, but uh, but they had not gotten the full dissemination on that uh, as of yet. And right. what I thought was, is we're dealing with Taiwan. Um, mm -hmm. I'd already heard a little bit more updates on Taiwan and that uh, that's coming up pretty soon uh the, you know the chinese are they're just really waiting for us to get more bogged down with russia uh over yeah. in in the ukraine conflict and uh and that's always that's the most erratic conflict i have ever seen uh whatsoever um uh speaking of erratic things oh my gosh I just thought of something. I'm going to throw this one in your lap. I didn't even tell you about this one before coming on. Oh, boy. Uh, I had been tasked with trying to find out um, if the Iranians or what technology the Iranians have acquired from fallen angels, because our government knew that, that the Iranians had been working with uh, uh, reptilians, which definitely are fallen angels. Right. Uh, and had been working with them on military secrets that we in the U.S. military had no clue as to what they were. So I was tasked about trying to find out what that was. And some of my best sources that I have in Iran, uh, I really came down to a dead end street. Well, oddly enough, today I found out what it was that Iran acquired. And I've not released this whatsoever, Brother Anthony. So I'm going to drop this one in your lap and then just uh, see what kind of thoughts you might have in relations to this. But Iran actually gained the technology of how to build and use the cobalt bomb. Hmm. Now, I don't know how much you know about the cobalt bomb. Are you familiar with this device? Uh, it seems like I, I've heard about it, but you might have to re-educate me. All right. It is a World War II device. The Germans are the ones that actually developed the cobalt bomb. Uh, I know uh, Donnie Barrow, who who I have uh, talked about numerous times before on my broadcast. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine. He's a minister uh, down in Florida. And uh, his grandfather worked with the German uh, government uh, during the times of World War II. Uh, he was not uh, pro-Nazi. He was uh, very much against the things that the German government was doing. But because of his uh, incredible brain, he was taken against his will to work on projects deep underground uh, with, the, with the German government. And one of those projects that they tried to put him on was the, the development of the cobalt bomb. Uh -huh. They were successful in making this bomb. Uh, it was later after the war when they saw that they were going to lose the war, that bomb was taken and it was hidden in the catacombs of the Vatican, uh, where there are other uh, interesting devices hidden there. 
And uh, oddly enough, though, the cobalt bomb is the most powerful weapon in the world in nuclear type devices. Um, three of them detonated would pretty much annihilate the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, the way it was described to me initially by Donnie himself, which his grandfather had, had shared with him, he said if this bomb was ever detonated, it would literally open up the mantle of the earth. That's how serious it is. Now, imagine the Iranians having that type of device. I know the Israelis uh, say that uh, that Iran, they're worried about Iran getting nuclear weapons. And of course, I've known they've had nuclear weapons for more than a decade now. Um, you know, so I don't know why we keep beating that drum. But now to find out they've got cobalt bomb technology, that's not good. No, that sounds like a power move. Um to get a hold of that kind of technology. Because as you were talking about that, I was trying to get an idea uh, of just exactly what that does. Uh, of course, like you've already mentioned, it is a nuclear weapon. Uh, and it looks like it's uh, designed to be used in a very wide, wide area. Uh, so like you said, you know, if you were to do three of them, it looked like it would take out the entire planet um, because of it would produce a massive amount of radioactivity um and contaminate pretty much the whole planet so even just using one uh would be very detrimental uh to the planet I mean, I did, and i think it's because of its reaction in the atmosphere um and what it can do before it actually dies out so to speak uh is what it looks like so uh to be able to obtain that kind of technology or however whether it's through fallen angels or whatever it comes to um that's definitely a power move for that area and kind of when i hear that it makes a little bit of sense to me um you know when you start looking into end times prophecy uh especially as we get into the rise of the antichrist and start getting into those seven years uh and you you know it's speculated arguably speculated i'll say i'll say this that the new um babylon would be built in iran uh, that would be the new uh, powerhouse of the world, so to speak, uh, and the new economic center. Uh, so, of course, when you look at U.S. history, uh, I think what was it World War? Was it World War One, World War Two? We dropped the first uh, uh, atom bomb. Uh, we immediately grabbed the power of the world. We grabbed it through fear because of that demonstration. When we became the economic center of the world, the power center of the world. And so, um, you know, if you are on that line of belief uh, that Iran would house the new the new Babylon uh, during this period of time, uh, I can see that. It makes a little bit of sense to me. What's your thought on that one? <laughs> yeah, you know, and, 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 and no doubt, uh, one of the things that was expressed to me when the U.S. was trying to find out what Iran might or might not have is that uh, they said that these entities... As, uh, as crazy as uh, they are, what they do is they try to keep a balance in the world uh, by uh, allowing different countries to have different types of technology so that the other country will think twice about attacking. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case here, of course, you're dealing with Satan to begin with. And so is the devil out there really trying to... Uh, make sure that Israel does not strike Iran directly by, you know, because somewhere along the line, they're going to let the cat out of the bag, you know, oh, by the way, uh, Iran now has a cobalt bomb. You know, that's going to make Israel a bit more nervous about striking any, any, uh, any of Iran's territory. But at the same time, uh, the Iranians are very, very intelligent people. These are not a bunch of uh, nomads out there on the back desert somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, they realize that detonating such a weapon like that would really bring about their own end as well. You can detonate it in Israel all you want, but you're going down with the ship. Right. So it's almost like a suicide pact, uh, if you ask me. The Iranians already have uh, the technology, the cloaking technology uh, that we developed back in the 40s. You know, the famous, uh, I forget the name of the ship that it was, where we could make the ship disappear. They made several movies about it. Everybody just thought this was speculation. 
or, 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 or not speculation, but it was all uh, science fiction and that uh, that never really happened. But we show the ship disappear, reappear, and the guy shows up. When it reappears, the, these guys are in the middle of the deck of the ship, fused with the deck of the ship, no less. Uh, that no, that really did happen. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I, it was disclosed. I got the disclosure mm -hmm. on that, that not one of those men that were involved in that experiment uh, ever came back normal. They were the ones that survived ended up in psychiatric treatment because it just really scrambled their brains as well. But that technology, supposedly we abandoned that, uh, but we never did. And we learned to make to where we could cause missiles to cloak as well when we fire them off. In other words, the missile shoots off, disappears. When it reappears, it's right before it hits its target. And uh, the Iranians successfully got that from the Chinese and they used that not only over in Saudi Arabia when we could never shoot anything down, they also used it on our barracks uh, in Iraq uh, when we had no ability to shoot down and uh, a lot of our soldiers were, were injured even though they were underground. And then they also demonstrated it at Demona, the nuclear power plant, uh, when they shot it from Syria. And then Israel later just said, oh, that was an accident because Israel didn't have any way to save face why they couldn't stop an Iranian missile from coming in. So you right. couple that right there, brother, with the fact of them having this new type of technology. Uh, it seems to me that somebody in the demonic world wants to put them uh, on the block as a force to be reckoned with. And with them being a part of the BRICS nations, mm -hmm. that's a little suspicious in my book. Right. And especially since, you know, they picked up, what, six new nations and Got plenty more coming in January, sounds like. Yes. And oddly yeah. enough, though, uh, one thing, and I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but um, uh, Israel has been in negotiations now for quite some time to join BRICS as well. I know this because I happen to know one of the head economists in Israel uh, who is privy to the negotiations. In fact, when uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu traveled to China uh, a couple of months ago back, that was what that trip initially was initiated for. Of course, the, the people that are involved in the negotiations have stayed behind. And uh, it does appear to be that BRICS is going to be part of that new world order scheme. Now, that doesn't mean that the American dollar is going to collapse overnight. But, uh, but it does mean that uh, our days are numbered. And that might yeah. take a year or two more to finish it off. But our days are numbered. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, yeah, it's like I mentioned before, uh, I don't know if it was with you or one of our broadcasts, you know, it's going to come down to NATO versus BRICS. Uh, but when you start looking at all these nations that are just wanting to join BRICS, um, you know, I, it, it's not going to it's not going to be long that NATO is going to become a minority in this. Uh, you know, I, I know Mexico is trying to get in on that. You know, the Latin, the Central Latin American uh, continents are trying to get on that. I think it came out also that uh, by the time we get into January, what is it like? Uh, seven of the major nine oil producing countries will be uh, BRICS nations. Uh, that's coming up as of January of 2024. Uh, I may I may be off uh, on my numbers just a little bit, but it's it's somewhere in that ballpark. Well, you know, you're right. And then on top of that, uh, they have now surpassed more than 50 percent of the market share uh, mm -hmm. going on in the world right now. So, um, in fact, the one economist that I had talked to uh, when you first shared with me about the issue about parts being uh, shipped to China, uh, I had asked him, you know, OK, well, if you were going to try to make any kind of uh, smart decisions of diversing um in any of uh any any financial means that you might have as a result of this what would you do it in as and my thought was currency uh you know i don't have money to invest on anything when it comes to investment but let's say if i wanted to trade out you know 500 dollars worth of american dollars uh what currency would you buy would you buy the chinese would you buy the russian i used to think russian was the better because it was so devalued by the u.s that naturally it would end up high, having a higher yield eventually. And I still kind of feel that way about it. I feel like that that is a smart way. He actually, though, told me, no, he said, I wouldn't go that route. He said, if I was going to, to purchase currency, he said, I would actually buy Israeli shekels. And, wow. uh, and I did ask him why Israeli shekels. He said, because no matter which way you look at it, he said, Israel is going to come out on top on this. 
And uh, he said, economically, that would be the one currency that I think that would survive it. And in kind of uh, backing that idea, the economist that I know in Israel also said to me that Israel had already, had, for the most part, dumped uh, the U.S. dollars that they carry uh, in order to be stronger in being part of the BRICS movement and, and what they call a gold-backed currency. Yeah, and, we were, and we're seeing that uh, all over the world. You know, you know everyone ditching the U.S. dollar. Even, even it, it says a lot when even third world countries are ditching the U.S. dollar. <laughs> Just saying, that's that speaks volumes. It, it does. And, you know, I think the one thing that we have going for us still, though, is that uh, you still have the European Union involved here. Uh, you have, like you said, third world countries, and they are dependent upon us. But there is a lot of battle going on right now for that for that market. You have yeah. Russia battling, China battling for Africa. Uh, in fact, the scary thing. Oh, my gosh. I didn't think about this one here. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick, too. I just saw this this morning. Over on RT News, there they were talking about um, uh, a uh, one of the talking about the third world countries in Africa going to a digital currency. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard about that. I I don't see it now. I actually had it up on my on my um, on my uh, website earlier there, but I don't know what the heck I did with it there. But um, wow, that's kind of weird there. Uh, but but anyway, the, I did see it earlier there, and 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 that really kind of bugged me because you know naturally when you think of that kind of stuff there, you know, you can't help but think of, you know, Beast Kingdom system, you know, uh, you know, going to a digital type currency. And I know there's a lot of people, brother Anthony, and you might speak on this from your perspective on this, that are worried about. Um, those types of issues happening because people think of Mark of the Beast, things like that. And I get it. I know that that's a fear. And I really don't know. Uh, as of yet, I don't know an answer to even say to people, you know, what's the, you know, what, do, what do we, what should we really look for when we're looking at, you know, uh, say the Mark of the Beast, that type thing there. I mean, I mean, even when we came out with the, uh, uh, I won't say that word there for the sake of the fact that we're on uh, YouTube right now. But, uh, you know, when we had this whole problem come up uh, recently uh, over the last few years here where everybody got sick and then everybody had to get some of these uh, boosters, we'll call it. Uh, and then so many people kept running around saying, oh, it's the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast, mark of the beast. And uh, I, I just would not go down that that route because I realized a lot of people had no idea what they were doing. And uh, many people were injured as a result. And I didn't think it was fair to them to throw them under the bus like that. Uh, because a lot of people just put them, you know, flat out. Basically, they were all, all these people were going to hell that, that got it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a little bit overkill, you know. But now that time has already come and gone. And and uh, we got new events coming up regarding right. that. And so, uh, so just if you could, Brother Anthony, if you kind of weigh in on, on your thoughts about that that we'll just and i don't know if we would say the mark of the beast and digital currency are one and the same I, i'm not willing to say that myself but how do you see these things as they, as they shape up going into the future okay uh just to revisit the africa thing real quick um as of 2021 europe was uh ranked africa's first in digital uh digital competitiveness in their index. Then later on, you had Gambia and Tanzania that joined uh, the digital movement over there. So I don't know if that, that was your articles, but you got three African countries so far that have been digital, that are being digital to the eyes as we speak. Um, of course, going digital uh, does play a part uh, in, in my personal opinion anyway, uh, does play a part in uh, the mark of the beast uh, system, um, because when you look at the mark of the beast system, uh, you can't buy or sell without it. You know, you have to have a mark either in your hand or your forehead, is what scriptures say. Uh, and so everything is going to be tracked. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to give birthday money without it being tracked, taxed, however it's going to be, social credit scores, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, 
Uh, you know, if you say the right thing, uh, if you say the right thing, you get an attaboy for the day. You know, you might, I, I, however it works, you might get a couple extra digital dollars that day. Uh, you know, uh, if you speak about Christ, uh, well, of course, you're not going to be speaking about Christ if you've got the mark of the beast because you're going to be audibly denying Christ um, once you get that mark. Uh, you know, one of the things that I see that is really propell propelling us pretty quickly uh, is the new palm technology. Uh, and you can use it in most food store, uh, food, whole food stores now. Uh, and it's basically you just wave your palm in front of the reader and it deducts your money out right away. I uh, saw a video on that on Twitter, I believe. Yeah. Uh, girl uh, was so excited. She was, I think, like at a whole food store or something like that. And she goes up there and she she waved her hand over the register there, kind of like we do this here. And mm -hmm. she just jumped back and goes, oh, my gosh, it works. So what what is that, Brother Anthony? What do they have in their hand? They don't they don't have anything in their hand. What it is is it you know it's kind of like your fingerprint. Everyone's fingerprint is identical is different. You know, uh, your palm of your hand is is different. So basically, what it is 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 from my understanding, I haven't done too much research into it yet. Uh, but you scan your palm just like you would scan your finger for, to access your phone, uh, or you would scan the retina of your eye to access. Uh, a door, which some companies do that because it's all different. You know, nobody has the same retina. Nobody has the same fingerprint. Uh, nobody has the same palm print. So they scan the, your, they scan your palm print and then um, you're able to pay with it. You know, they're able to use that technology, use that palm print to get authorization uh, to access your bank account, access your credit. Uh, Amazon uh, this is Amazon's definitely using this technology when purchasing things online and things of that sort. And so um, this is going to be definitely be something that everyone's going to be doing in the short term um, going forward. Uh, you know, it's not the mark of the beast, though. A lot of people are going to come out and say, oh, well, this scan, this palm technology is the mark of the beast. No, it's just the credit card of the 21st century. OK, uh, but it's pretty, I mean, you. I don't think you could get any closer to it without receiving a chip because the next step is something being inserted into you. Uh, and how are they How are they going to get to that place? You know, my personal opinion is, well, it's this. Uh, with, with all the, the, you know, all the hacking jobs taking place around the world and then governments and things like that, people are going to start getting tired of losing their money, okay? Uh, people are going to get tired of having to reset their accounts. They're going to be wanting something that's going to be sustainable, okay? Just like the palm technology, they're able to scan your palm and know that it's you doing that because nobody else has that. They're going to take that a step further, and it's going to be not your palm, not your fingerprint. It's going to be your DNA because when you print out the code for your DNA, it's what? Uh, it's it's like, what, 30 pages uh, that get printed out that have the code to your specific DNA that cannot match anybody else's on earth. And that's going to be used to identify who you are in that computer chip. All right. And so it's going to be when that happens and they put that thing in your hand or in your forehead, if you choose to get that, which I hope as our viewers, uh, choose not to do that should be even be around to see that, um, but they'll be able to identify every movement you make. You, you won't losing your credit card or losing your money or anything like that uh, will be <laughs> uh, stinking impossible uh, with that. But uh, we are heading to that very quickly. You know, digitalizing all currencies. Uh, I know the United States is in the process of doing that now with new Fed Now uh, app coming out real soon. That's all digital uh, money. Uh, you know, we're seeing third world countries digital, digitizing their money. Canada is in the process of going all digital. I think that I think that takes place this year, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so everyone's getting rid of paper fiat. They're going digital. That's part of the tracking system. Uh, Technology is already there. The AI system is going to play a massive role uh, in that. Uh, in controlling that, which uh, we know that, you know, the artificial intelligence, they'd be able to have the, the, the capability to keep up with everyone on planet Earth simultaneously, uh, almost as if it's like a God character that comes from fallen technology uh, that comes from a spirit of Antichrist 
And so that too, as we as that has already come online now, that's leading us into. So uh, really, we're, we're just we're really just one step away from this thing being instituted. I mean, if somebody wanted to come out and tomorrow, in my personal opinion, and say, hey, uh, we're going to start marketing everybody. The technology is already in place. The system's already in place. Um, you know, monetarily speaking, the uh, you know the uh, the blockchain system needed for that is already in place. Um, you know, I I don't I honestly not hundred percent sure what the holdup is, really, uh, because it's all there. I I definitely get where you're coming from on this, brother. And I'll tell you what, you know, was it was what one thing I do find fascinating about uh, when we're looking at this technology using the hand is that you know this is even if they implement that technology as part of what their true intention will end up being um it's very interesting because there's nothing to be inserted at that point right. so i can see where it would be much easier for people to uh, to end up, uh, you know, actually falling into that category and accepting it because, you know, hey, you know, they, they just they just didn't they didn't anticipate that. But but then again, like you said, though, uh, it still doesn't it doesn't meet the. Um, it doesn't meet the biblical requirements. Uh, and, right. and that's one thing that people have really got to look at. You got to look at the biblical requirement when we talk about uh, Mark of the Beast. And this is why I always try to warn people, you know, don't be so quick to judge what technologies. I mean, look, let's go back and rem remind ourselves, you know, you had, you know, how many people thought the Mark of the Beast was your social security number? Or how many people thought the Mark of the Beast was the, uh, the UPC symbol on the products that you were getting or, uh, or, or, or many other different types of things that have come along, you know, and then people would really believe it, Brother Anthony. That's the, that's it. We're done. We're finished, you know. Right. Uh, so here's the thing on this, because uh, I, I, as you were saying something about this, I was like, you know what? There was an article that came out today about this. And so basically what it is, you go on Amazon, it's through Amazon. You go on Amazon, you register your fingerprints, so it's basically, it's really your fingerprints. It's not so much your palm. You register your fingerprints on there, like you, and you do that through your cell phone when you, you know, you open a new a Apple iPhone, you know how you put your thumb on your hand on there and do all yes. that. Same thing. Then on there, you register whatever credit cards you want to be registered with those fingerprints, and that's how you do it. Uh, but they're saying that with AI technology, and here, and see, here's the part, this is what's going to, kind of freak people out, but it's saying that with artificial intelligence uh, technology could be used to create fake versions of your voice, your face, your handprint, which could be used to do biometric based payment systems. Okay. So they've already got a problem with this. So this is, and, and, and that's what it kind of goes back to what I was saying is that uh, people are going to get tired of their stuff getting hacked, especially if you're telling me that artificial intelligence can do that. The only way that's going to get you're going to get around that is by using your genetic 30 page code of your own DNA. And the only way they're going to be able to do that is through that chip. And so this is, you know, this even already with new technology coming out, we got a flaw. So we're going to have to come up with something else even better than that. You know, like I said, we're, we're my personal opinion, uh, Brother Stephen, we're right there. I mean, I, I can't think of the next piece of technology uh, to come out to guarantee you safe and secure uh, purchasing and not getting hacked, it, it, it would be the mark of the beast, okay? To make sure that you are where you're at and that you're it's not a fake you or a double you, it, it, it has to be that technology. So, uh, you know, we're, we're there. We are. We are. We're definitely coming into that that time frame uh, of things happening. Uh, if we can, brother, I want to kind of turn real quick with you before we run out of too much time here. Uh, okay. not, that, not that we're really on a time limit, but I also not. I don't want to keep you all night and not let you go home to see your wife. She might she might not like me later if we do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I know that uh, Mike Mike has uh, talked a lot about uh, viruses, things like that. Uh, coming up 
uh, especially things from the permafrost, uh, you know, those type things there. But in relation to that, naturally, one of the things that uh, that that I've kind of been updated up on a little bit too, we're, we're looking at um, Planet X or binary system, or, you know, I, I get told different versions or names that you might want to call it there. Uh, celestial body coming in from behind the sun, things like that. Uh, I've often heard that. I'll, I'll always hear that it'll be coming from the backside of the sun. That's one of the things I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I use different sources of information uh, from Israel to, uh, to Iranian intelligence. Uh, uh, and, and Iranian intelligence doesn't normally have as much information on that particular sphere, but it's always been very accurate. Uh, information I get from from some of the scientists that I know there, uh, but uh, and and also special forces that we have here too. I get some of the information from that aspect too, but but going into this issue here, MB33, he has published uh, a couple of videos that he's received in where it obviously shows an object. And uh, coming in from behind the sun, they're catching this on sunrise. Uh, on the one I know particularly, it was in California, uh, on the coast there. And of course, when he's doing the camera, brother, my uh, brother Anthony, he's taken and he's showing as he moves the camera around. You can see the reflect ref, uh, refractions. Uh, you know, in other words, the different dots that float around and stuff when you're filming. You can see them moving around. If it was a still picture. You might think that that's a planet sitting there. And a lot of friends that sent me even pictures that I thought initially might be a planet out there during the daytime ended up being refractions. Uh, I know the, the couple that sent me, though, the images of the moon at night where they had this object in the sky. I did get that confirmed that that was a real object. So I know that that's true. But in this case, though, with these videos on with no window in between, Two different people he's had send in those objects there. You see a light coming in from behind the sun. Now, I've been told it's like a sun coming type thing. Um, but one thing that I've heard consistently is that the biggest thing that we can see here on the Earth are going to be weather type of events, whether it be weather, whether it be uh, meteorite showers, whether it be... Uh, earthquakes. Um, I've even heard so much as dimensions that we will collide with dimensions. And I got that confirmed today with an with a gentleman that I was on with uh, in, in a phone call today. Uh, he was sharing that with me as well, that he knew about that, that we would collide with other dimensions. In other words, you're walking down, let's say you're walking in Walmart. And the next thing you know, while you're standing there in Walmart, you look over and you see a creature with a bug head or something like that on him. And you're like, what? And you look back and you don't do a double tap, go back and suddenly he's not there any longer. That's because we're moving in and out of other dimensions. And those creatures are also moving in and out of other dimensions. Uh, I, I know you're more up to date, even with things that Mike has spoken about. Can you share some of those type things with us that, that you're more privy to right now? Yeah, he's um, he hasn't really gotten too much into the discussion of Planet X as a subject here lately, um, but he has referred to that we would see a, like a second moon uh, in our in the skies that we would somewhere along the way pick up a second moon. Uh, people are going to see that; they're not going to be able to hide that. He did talk about that. Uh, one of the things that he's really uh, honed in on here recently. In the last two weeks, uh, matter of fact, just just this, uh, what's today? Today's Tuesday. Uh, so, matter, yeah, just last week, um, and he's brought it up a couple times, would be the influx of a meteor field coming in. Uh, he's been really concerned about that. He's even put a time frame in there that uh, we would be entertaining the, the, this meteor field, with, meteor field within the next two months. Um, he's uh, brought that forth and was kind of... Uh, talking about what that would look like, you know, with meteors coming in, uh, how this is going to cause a lot of issues with the uh, infrastructure, issues with the insurance companies and rebuilding things. Uh, and it would really come at a very, at a fairly distressing time 
um, you know, amongst amongst the earth with all the geopolitical uh, stuff we've got going on and things like that. Um, you know, uh, people would also capitalize on it during this time, uh, you know, trying to um, bring the world together, uh, you know, maybe trying to get, have less freedoms during this period. Uh, he's also alluded to the while this is taking place, we would be entertaining a new uh, variant uh, of COVID, uh, but it would just be a smoke screen uh, that this that that particular thing wouldn't be so much of an issue. And of course, uh, but that they would allegedly, uh, and we have to be, be careful how we use our words, um, that we would be allegedly be entertaining something a little bit more serious, uh, and that would be. Uh, and what he's what he states would be where some of these new protocols uh, that we could potentially be seeing uh, would be more for that and not so much for the other issue uh, that has come up uh, a couple of times. And I think that was even brought up in Paul Bagley's last uh, show as well. Um, hailstones. He's talked about the mixture of actual ice and stone coming from the sky uh, I believe there's going to be a conversation this week concerning that. Uh, and so we'll see what the details of that are. Uh, and so that's pretty much. And then he's been focusing a lot in about the, the divide of America, uh, the geopolitical upheaval that's coming uh, and the changes that we'll be seeing. And of course, he's gone into his dreams about the stone steps have come up. So that's kind of where he's been at the last two weeks. Uh, and so probably the more answer your question uh, with the influence of Planet X would be the, uh, in the uh, meteor field coming in, because we know that's part of that, uh, that would be entertaining, uh, you know, that coming in. And then, of course, some of the upheaval that we'll be seeing because of that. So. Yes. That, and, and those some of those things especially when you talk about the meteorites that's one of the things that i'd heard earlier in the year was that uh that we would be seeing uh late summer uh meteorite showers and of course i always hear most of that will hit the oceans uh so we you know it's just whether or not how much we'll see on land uh at this point and um and so yeah there there are a lot of things going on uh that, that you know we just got to, you know, it's hard to tell on some issues there. Uh, I know that the uh, magnetosphere also plays into that. Mm -hmm. The more that you get a collapse of the magnetosphere, the greater chance you have of these asteroids coming in or meteorites coming in. Whereas the, uh, the, the stronger it is, the less likely they are to come in. And one of the things I'd heard a lot about too myself was that uh, there would actually be less of them hitting the Earth this time around, more of them hitting our satellites and knocking satellites out of orbit. Uh, so that's something I'm anticipating as well. Uh, any last comments, uh, Brother uh, Anthony? Uh, just basically say that, you know, no matter no matter what happens, uh, you know, because we are, we are facing uncertain times. Uh, and I don't think really anybody, even probably, probably some of the most brilliant minds has an exact absolute on what's going to take place. Uh, and really when it comes down to, to the nitty gritty of it all, you know, it's, it's on God's timetable. Uh, you know, we can, we can look and see things coming and we can try to put a timetable on things, but if God's not ready for it to happen yet, uh, it's not going to happen. And so we have to remember that when we start talking about uh, pestilences and plagues and meteors and, planets and all of these things, you know, we do know that, uh, you know, scripture tells us that there's angels that are holding back the four winds from coming upon the earth. Uh, I personally believe, as you would say, brothers, uh, Stephen, uh, those were probably the watchers uh, that are holding things back is my personal belief on that. Um, but we know that there will be a time when those, uh, the angels that are holding back the four winds, uh, that they will be allowed to blow on the earth. Uh, and when those come, it's going to bring everything with it. Everything's going to happen simultaneously. We're going to see uh, the meteors uh, falling to earth, or as Revelation calls the stars uh, coming down. You know, we're going to see that the pestilences, uh, you know, it's not going to be anything like what we've dealt with uh, in 2020 or, or what's coming. Uh, this is going to be serious. You know, um, we're definitely going to be seeing all these things that we can see 
uh, with our modern technology, we can see how it, we can see it coming. We can see how it's going to come, how it's going to play out. We know now what it is. Okay. We can look at the Bible and identify, okay, the sun scorching man. Okay. That's because the atmosphere, we got parts of the atmosphere missing it, missing it's radiation. We know what it is now. Okay. We we're, we're seeing parts of the country being cooked right now. Uh, so we know what's causing these things, but the fulfillment of it uh, is what I'm getting at. You know, I think God allows a little, little tidbits or harbingers of things to happen now to get our attention, but the main event hasn't taken place yet, but it's going to. Uh, and so when it comes down to, to that, it's be prepared, have your spirit in the right place. Don't give in to lustful desires. Don't be caught up uh, into the sinful temptations of this world because there's going to be a lot. And unfortunately, it's going to get harder with some of the new, with the new uh, relaxing of things that are coming, especially if you're a guy. Um, it's going to be very difficult. And so you're going to have to really be prayed up. Uh, rely on the, 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 uh, rely on the discernment of the Holy Spirit, get in tune with the giftings of the Holy Spirit as well and the power of the Holy Spirit because uh, being able to uh, operate in those things is really going to help you, not only you yourself and the sustainment of the things of Jesus Christ, but also to get people uh, to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ because we're getting to a place where it's going to be more than just words, but we're going to have to have power behind those words yes. to get through what we're going through, especially when these disclosures come out and we got these little entities going around that can all of a sudden help paraplegics walk. Uh, you're going to have to have something else besides, well, Jesus can heal you too. That's great and it's truth, but you got to have something to back that up behind there because the devil's out doing it too. Uh, and, and it's it's really what we're coming into. And so signs, wonders, and miracles are going to follow his servants. We see that in Acts in the last days, he pours out his spirit upon all flesh. All means everyone, which to me tells me if you want it, you're going to get it. Okay. Uh, that's that we're quickly approaching that, uh, that movement too. Just as we're seeing all these bad things taking place and the rise of the beast system, we're also going to see a mighty move of God taking place because God's not going to just going to sit back and not do something for his people. Uh, we're going to see a mighty move of God taking place simultaneously, parallel with all of this happening. So get ready for uh, signs, wonders, and miracles for the church. Get ready for revival to come across the streets in these countries in these last days as we get close to that final roll call. Amen. That sounds wonderful, brother. Uh, listen, we want to thank you for, for coming on with us tonight. Uh, Brother Anthony, can you share how people can uh, support the work that you do and how they can also be able to view more of the work that you do? Yeah, we've got a couple of different things uh, going for us. Uh, if you want to support us here on Daily Excellence, we've got two places. Uh, you can uh, support us on our Patreon. We, main, we mainly use our Patreon channel uh, so that people can support us monthly if they choose to do so. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, do one-time donations to Daily Excellence through our PayPal, or uh, you can send us, uh, you know, something through the mail. Uh, our our uh, address is posted in our description links and all of our, our descriptions box on all of our videos. Uh, you can view us here on the main channel and Daily Excellence on YouTube. Uh, you know, we're live Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights. Uh, and we uh, also live stream our church services on Sunday mornings. And then we, of course, we have Mike from Council of Time uh, on. Uh, right now, we have him on like five times a week because we are so far behind in, in this content. Uh, and he keeps putting out new stuff left and right. So we've been doing that. And of course, then we have, we bring on special guests. We'll every once in a while periodically have a, 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 another video that'll come up. Uh, from like real people like you or uh, other channels that we um, interview with, we um, will have those videos that come up too. So uh, you can join us on YouTube for whatever reason. You can't find us on YouTube because it's happened. Uh, we are on Rumble. Uh, that is also our main backup uh, is Daily Excellence on uh, Rumble. We're there too. So YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, Patreon, we're on all those places all those places so uh, all right. we have to uh, you, you got to help me on one thing real quick brother okay. I'm, I'm on patreon right now if i want to find your channel walk me through when i click on patreon how would i actually go directly to you would i actually just go patreon.com daily excellence is that would that be right 
Yeah, I believe it's a uh, Patreon. Or let me look at like I believe it's Patreon.com slash Daily Excellence. I'm gonna see if I pull it up there. Uh, yes, I did get it. Hey, hey, hey! All right, listen, I gotta tell you guys. Oh, I'm actually already on there. I didn't know that. So, <laughs> I want to. I got. I gotta tell you guys straight up. Because uh, I saw so, we we actually to me Patreon is one of the easiest ways to support a ministry. And it, it's not going to break you financially. I know some people, they, they get a little intimidated about, uh, you know, because they feel like, you know, oh, if I only, do, if I only do, did a dollar, you know, it look terrible, you know. Don't feel bad about that. Please don't. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, every every dollar does matter. And I'm not here to, to say this because uh, you guys know how I am. Uh, but I the thing I like about Patreon is that, it allows you as an individual, like in my case here, there are three different people that I support on Patreon already. Daily Excellence is one of those, you know, and you can support more works in that uh, arena, if that's the right way to put it. And it's not financially a hardship, but yet you could take a handful of people that really come together to support a ministry that's dedicated their life to be able to bring the gospel to you, to be able to share uh, insights, information, news, whatever the case may be. And mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, you know, to me, it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, and I know that Brother Anthony doesn't have, he has a lot of, I think his is free regardless. So you don't have to contribute if you don't want to, or you can, but I'm just saying it's an easy way to support yeah. a ministry. So, uh, Patreon I too, um, for your, for, I think it may work on your Patreon as well, but, um, if like you're in a hurry and you don't have time to listen to the whole thing, uh, you can actually download that file, the actual, uh, file from Patreon onto your device and be listening to it, uh, while you're out jogging or at work. So you don't have to actually watch right. the video. So that's a real good thing that Patreon does, uh, and that we utilize over here quite a bit. Uh, as people are able to download um, onto their device, the you know MP3 type vid type file onto your devices, so it works out really good too. Right. So I, I just really encourage you to 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 uh, support uh, Brother Anthony there, and like I said, very easy way to do it. Uh, and one other thing, in closing, guys, before we close out here, uh, my wife's website for her father, JusticeForStephanSuto.org, it is up and running. Uh, I'll be interviewing a doctor tomorrow night on that very subject. What happened uh, to my father-in-law? Actually, what happened to my wife, myself as well. Uh, but in his case, he actually uh, died from uh, the, the treatment that was administered to him. Uh, wow. there, there, the website, though, is under still under construction, but it is going to have more information along with the evidence that supports those things that are that are being that have been shared with that with you guys already also carries the, the video there too uh, that I did initially uh, disclosing this information so uh, we just want to make sure you're aware that that's there again justice for the number the word for for Stefan s t e f a n suto dot org anyway I'll be posting to the links for brother Anthony's uh Patreon, his uh, Daily Excellence broadcast as well. Some of those in the link, uh, the description here below for you to be able to, to be able to check those things out. Brother Anthony, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank uh, you for having me. And he had to fast the entire time. So he gets to go <laughs> home and eat now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So anyway, uh, thank you. And we want to thank your wife as well for being so kind to share uh, your time with us uh, because, you know, Let's, let's face it, um, she pays a sacrifice as well uh, for you to be able to to come and stay late and to uh, be able to do things like this uh, uh, with us. So we do sincerely thank her for, for working with us there to allow you to come on with us too. So God bless her and, you very much. and your whole family, brother.